Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Generative Geek. In today's video, we are going to use Open Router and the free models available within Open Router to do some sort of a text classification for free, right? So the idea here is that you know a lot of times when we do classification tasks, we don't need a, a lot of text output from the model. We only want one token from the model, something like maybe a true or false or maybe a class category and a lot of these free models like you know maybe llama 3.18b instruct if you go to um, if you go to um, uh, open router and you put the prompt pricing to almost zero you can see all of these all of these models are free right so llama 3.1 which is the latest meta model uh, is available for free google gamma is available for free phi 3 which is from uh, microsoft is available for free idea here is hey how do we use some of these models uh, to get various kind of things done for free. So let's say some examples can be if I go to Upwork RSS, if I'm, if I'm let's say, um, uh, RSS, um, if I'm a freelancer and I, I apply for a lot of jobs in on uh, that are posted on up, Upwork, can I build a AI system which looks at the RSS feeds automatically and classifies which fee, which jobs are important or interesting for me, right? So someone has put a post in the community saying, how do you use targeted RSS feeds for automatic job alerts, right? So one is, how do you get a lot of these job alerts coming your way? But out of all these jobs that come your way, which jobs you might have certain, certain criteria and you will apply only for those kind of jobs, not all the jobs. How do you then use an automatic system to uh, to basically um, uh, apply for jobs, right? Or maybe uh, something like, let's just say, uh, if we have um, uh, maybe a lot of articles coming our way and we only want to read articles which are about AI or LLMs or something around software development, how do you put that classification into work? So today's lecture is going to be about that. Let's get started. So I'm quickly going to show you what we are building today. Um, this is the notebook that I have right now. And what we are going to build is, we are going to build all of this. Um, we are going to, basically, this is what we are building. So so let's just say, if we pass something to the model, uh, something like, uh, these are, let's just say, the articles that are coming your way. Uh, and someone, and you basically want an AI to help you understand if this article is indeed about software engineering or not. Uh, if this is the article saying, hey, understanding the historical development of ancient currency systems reveals fascinating insights. If this was the article, all you want from the model is a true or false. Um, then maybe if this is the article saying, hey, you know what, um, uh, latest advancements in AI framework like TensorFlow and PyTorch, how do you have the LLM model respond back to you for free uh, using these free uh, models available on Open Router? How do you use them? To just get a true or false, right? So, so this is what we are going to build today. Uh, this is my demo notebook. I'm just going through a quick code walk through this time, rather than just writing the entire code from scratch. Uh, this way, I think these videos can be shorter and will give you a lot of benefit. I'm going to explain to you what we, what we are doing in each of these lines, right? So, um, so here, what we first do is, and as I'm explaining, I'm also going to run this code with you, right? So. Uh, so first, what we are going to do is we are going to install Langchain, Langchain Community, and OpenAI, right? So, so I've just issued the command. It's first going to connect because the Google Colab notebook is not connected to any runtime. It's first going to connect itself to a runtime and then install all of these dependencies, right? So once these dependencies are installed, we'll then be able to make calls to these to um, uh, to Open Router, right? So I'm using Open Router here. I have already showed you how to use Open Router in another uh, another uh, episode. But let's just say if you don't know how to use Open Router, go to openrouter.ai. Uh, you can get yourself a key. You don't even need to subscribe or pay or add any money into the credits. All you are required is go uh, get yourself a key. And maybe, you know, because if it's a free key, all you will have to do is if there are no credits, you won't be able to make calls to the paid models, right? So there are lot, tons of models available, including the latest uh, Llama 3.1405 billion parameter of model. Um, and they, it's provided by a lot of providers, right? So, uh, and all of them charge differently. Uh, Open Router basically uh, makes a decision of which one it wants to send the request to, basis availability, cost, and all of, uh, all of the throughput and other, other things. Um, it sends to 
one of the um, best provider that's the goal of open router now that's the thing that it the role that it plays now uh, what once you have the key um, come to your google collab notebook and add that key to open router underscore api underscore key right so create a new secret give the secret permission for the notebook and you are all set from this point right now what i'm doing is i'm just creating some new messages and i'm saying hey go through the text provider and answer in one uh, word if the text is useful for a software programmer who is interested in news and information about artificial intelligence you should return true if it is useful and false if it is not useful so this is like a prompt that i am basically creating for the model right so the text then follows that and this is some sample text we are saying understanding the historical developments of ancient currency systems reveals fascinating insights into trade and economics and you know i just had chat gpt create some of these for me uh, i just told it that hey you know what create some text which is not relevant for a ai or a software engineer and then i asked it to create some text which is useful for a ai and software engineer right so uh, so so what we are doing is we are creating a list of uh, messages where i'm saying hey new message and then i have this message the list list ends then i have a test message um, and then what we are doing is we are just appending new message uh, new messages is the list i'm just appending some text message to it right so uh, some test message to it so this way what we'll have is we'll have a list of three messages these are the three messages right that i just showed you you should return a true uh, this includes the prompt so understanding the historical development of ancient currency system reveals fascinating insights into trade and economics second one is explore the latest advancements in ai frameworks uh, and the third one is the construction of the great wall of china began during the 7th century and continued for centuries and all of that right so so now i have these messages available consider let's say if they are coming from coming to you from an article or they were coming to you from a um, rss feed and you want some sort of a classifier to just push messages that are of interest to you right so uh, and we are building that kind of a classifier now using the free llm models import requests import os import json import time very very clear we are importing some libraries then i am building a open router client class right and the way i am doing it is i am, i first have a constructor and i am pushing the api key what should be the default model uh, and that default model is also passed as part of the constructor uh, call then what are the fallback models uh, open router has this very interesting thing where you can have a default model which will be the first call if the call fails then it's then you can pass in a list saying hey these are the fallback models and it does like a waterfall so it will call the next one in line if that also fails then the next one then the next one um until all of them are extinguished right so and then which is the base call right so this is the url we are finally going to call next we have a generate response so we are passing we are taking a new message and we are going to try for three times and this is the part which is the most important part of this whole notebook right so what i'm doing is i'm creating some sort of a few shot training data here so look at it i have a role and i'm saying hey system is the role and the content is you are expert at reading content and finding if it is useful for a software programmer interested in artificial intelligence slash machine learning domain right so that's the context or the role i have given the model next i'm saying the human role content is go through the text provided and answer in one word if the text is useful for a software engineer who is interested in news and information you should return a true if it is useful then i have some text which is about master the intricacies of fine tuning llms to create custom high performance models tailored to your this that right so some sort of a um, uh, question uh, some sort of a text which appears to be useful for a software engineer interested in llms and ai and then the assistant returns back a true right so this is like a this is like training the system saying hey i sent you the human sent you this and the assistant replied back with a true the human sent you this and the assistant replied back with a true something like that right so so next time the human is again sending the message go through the text and it is saying hey who is interested you should return a true text follows unlock the future of app development with cutting edge llm technology enabling smarter more intuitive user experiences transform your thing into this that right and the and this guy again replied back with a true previously there was one instance which i missed where the model has replied back with a false so it is like we have trained the model with some few shots both true and false uh so discover the best gardening tips for growing tomatoes and all of that and the model replies back with a false right so next what we are doing is we are just going to pass whatever comes in as a new message and we'll wait for the assistant to reply back right now this is model models is self dot default model plus self dot fallback models right so so we are just creating which, what are the various models and then we are going to say hey for attempt 
comma model and enumerate models we are going to try right so we are basically trying that hey in case if the model fails then we have some sort of a fallback available so response is self dot make api call return choices the, we are returning the first choice message content and the model uh, and we are saying in case if something some exception happens we are just printing out the exception and if let's say the attempt is like you know all of the models have been tried then you know all models failed including the fallbacks right we are just printing that we go to sleep for one second and then we are going to just die there so this is how you make an api call we pass the authorization header with our api call with the bearer uh, whatever is the referrer you pass here that referrer you will start seeing when you go to open router and you go to activity if you look here uh, your app your app this is basically what what this thing is giving like you know is coming because of this um, you can give name to your app otherwise you will start seeing your app your app right so uh, and then uh, content type is application json next you start giving it uh, the data so the data is model model name and basically the messages and the route is fallback right so response is request dot post then you just go to self dot base you pass the header you pass the json and you raise for status right so then whatever is the response you just pass back the response dot json next what we are doing is we are first fetching the api key because this is where we are now going to instantiate the class uh, the client right so till now we were all we were just creating the class the class creation is all done now we are actually replying creating an instance of the class so we are calling it the client and this is how you are uh, i am passing in the default model i can actually say hey you know what my default model is uh phi 3 let's say if i want to use phi 3 right so phi 3 medium 128k i can just copy this here the model name i'll come here and paste this thing here for free right so this becomes my default model and then i can have the llama 3.1 uh instruct free as the uh, second fallback model right so i can have i can come in here i can say hey uh, this becomes my uh, uh, the first fallback model. Then I want to use 3.8b as the second model. Then I want to use Quen. Then I want to go to Anthropic Plot 2.1. Then I want to use Grife Mythomax. So I passed in a big list. Uh, and the whole objective is one of them has to, you know, re respond back. Uh, next, we are saying for new message in messages. If you look at the messages, these were the messages that we are going to try. This is the list. Uh, each of them is going to go one by one. We are looping through it. Uh, once this, and we are saying, hey, try response and the used model. So it's going to say response from the model and the model name and whatever is the response, right? If there's an error, we'll see the error, right? So uh, clearly this is, this is the response we are expecting. We expect false for the first one. We expect true and then we expect false. And we don't expect any more lines, right? Because that's what we have asked the model to do. So now let's just see if it follows the way we have asked it to do. Uh, I'm just going to run this code now. Uh, so it's running now and a new messages is not defined. I think I missed uh, running some of these code upstairs, like, you know, above. Um, so I'm just going to run this code again. And this time, let's see, uh, response from model Microsoft 5.3, uh, it says true, true. But if you look at the third one, right? It says yes it's true that this content could be beneficial for someone interested i we did not ask it to reply back in more it, it responded back well for the first two instances though uh, the answer doesn't seem right to me right so it says true for the first one which means that the the ancient currency system text is also getting classified as um, as useful for an ai engineer uh, maybe it is it is useful in some context but the context that we want the answer for uh, this doesn't make sense right so i'm just going to change now to meta 3.1 um, instead of Microsoft 5.3. And I'm going to remove this from here, um, right? So, and let's see what meta 3.1 responds back with, right? So so this, this way you can actually, so see, it's saying false, true and false, right? So, so this is the right, uh, right approach. And now if you go here, you go to your activity, you'll be able to see that, hey, we made some calls. We made a call to 5.3. All of these costs are zero, right? So we are making, we are using free models. So the costs are all zero, right? So uh, this way you can just keep making calls. You can, if you want, you can, you want to try Grife Mythomax. Uh, this could be a paid model, I think. Uh, let's use Quen. Uh, I know this is a free because it says free in the name. Uh, so we'll use Quen now and see what Quen responds back with. Um, 
Quinn says false, true, false. So you can see, you know, even some of these models like Quinn are also responding back well. I don't know why Microsoft fee, which is a small model, why I don't know why it is responding back with uh, more text when the prompt is very clear. We have also a few short learning examples there. But this is what I wanted to uh, walk you through today, guys. Uh, this code notebook will be available as part of the description. Have a look, uh, play around. Uh, this is open router is really fun, right? You know, it gives you access to so many models. Uh, it has something called as a flavor of the week. Um, if you go to it, it, it is like one endpoint. You make a call to this, but they keep shifting the underlying model every week. Though I have been seeing that, you know, uh, they haven't changed the model since a long time now. So last model was June 27th. Uh, and this is um, Steno 8B. Uh, this is not a free model. It, they charge 25 cents and $1.5. Whereas if you look at a GPT-40 Mini, uh, it's a much cheaper model, right? 15 cents and 60 cents, right? So... Um, though 60 cents is expensive uh, uh, as compared to, let's say, something else like a 405. Uh, 405 is still very expensive. Yeah. So, uh, so this was it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, do subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a thumbs up. And I would love to hear comments and suggestions from you. Thank you.